welcome to my podcast. I'm really happy that you're joining me and I'm looking forward to showing you all the things that I've been knitting over the past two weeks. I have one finished object and three different whips that I've been working on and then a couple of swatches. So let's get right in. Um, the first finished object that I have is a pair of socks and they are the painting triangle socks by Stephen West. <laughs> These have been worn, so um, they're a little bit fuzzy, but here's the first one, and here is the second one. I made these out of woolly mammoth fiber sock yarn. Okay, they're really fuzzy. I hope that you can see them well. And I also filmed a video about making these, and it will be uploaded probably next week. I think that I'll have all the clips together in time. Um, I wanted to use, I used Woolly Mammoth Sock Yarn to make them, um, which is a no nylon, no non superwash sock yarn. It is, we'll see how it wears. I have a pretty good amount of it. Um, the colors are very beautiful and it's really nice to work with, but uh, the final test is to see how it wears. And I'm really hard on my feet. I always wear holes in my shoes and in my socks. So um, yeah, we'll see. The only other non superwash sock yarn I've ever used was by John Arbin and that had nylon in it. That was also really nice to use, but I gave it to a friend, gave the pair of socks to a friend, and I haven't, I move, then I move, so I haven't really seen her since I gave them to her, so I don't know how they've worn. But I'm desperate to use that sock yarn for a pair of socks for myself sometime. I think once I use up my woolly mammoth sock yarn, I'm gonna get some more of that. Um, but they don't have that many colors. And they don't have like not that many colors, but the woolly mammoth sock yarn, every drop there's new colors. It's like endless colors. So it's not, the John Arvin doesn't have that sort of color array, um, but yeah, they still got some good ones. Anyway, um, yeah, the heel flap is looking a little bit worn already after one wear. So yeah, like I said, we'll see. This pair of socks was part of the Stephen West 2023 Year of Socks. It's the third sock in the collection, which is the February sock. Um, there's a bonus before the year, so January is the second pair and February was the third. And I thought this pattern was quite nice. I think I really enjoyed knitting them, but part of that was because uh, the one, the pair of socks that came before this, uh, what, was it, what were they called? Um, cable trellis. That was a trial to knit. It took such a long time. I made so many mistakes. So anything after that would have seemed really nice. Um, these ones were pretty fast to knit. There's a lot of slip stitches in it, which I... Just on the top. I'm not... I don't know if I love knitting with slip stitch motifs, although I think I'm going to be doing a lot of that with the Stephen West sock series. Um, there's one row that's really tight, unless you deliberately leave a lot of slack in your slip, because there's one of the rows in the repeat is knit one, slip five. So there's one of those like right here across from the heel and that can be really tricky to get on over your heel unless you're very deliberate about making sure that that row is really loose. But then you don't want it to be so loose. Oh, my cat's on the kitchen counter. Just a sec. My cat was on the kitchen counter where he is not supposed to be because that's where the cooktop is. And I don't want him to jump onto the cooktop. But what was I saying? Oh yeah, so it's an interesting stitch to have for a sock design. Um, I really like them. Uh, we'll see how the yarn wears. I like the texture of the triangles. I don't remember what color the yarn was, but since Woolly Mammoth is 
is so everything you think is quite one of a kind. So if you see a pink that has quite a bit of yellow speckles and the occasional like hot pink or purple, then that's probably the same. Um, I made the size two and I made a shorter leg because that was what I wanted to do. And it used about 40 grams of the dark pink and about 20 grams of the light pink, which is pretty good. And I made them on nine inch circular needles because my floats are best when I use nine inch circular needles. So, oh, that's very nice of you, Fergie. I don't know if you can see, but he's all settling down on my lap. Oh, I should tell you about what I'm wearing. I'm not sure if I've worn this in a podcast before. Did I wear it in my last podcast? It's really hard to remember what's been going on. But, so this is my Trasta. It's a pattern by Jennifer Steingast, and I made it out of knitted in yarn. Um, I knit a completely different gauge, two strands of knitted, and I think I did a six millimeter needle or a five and a half millimeter needle. Um, and I made the extra small. I don't know how big it ended up being. Probably, I mean, my, my chest is about 42 inches and it has maybe, it's zero inches of positive ease, plus or minus one. So that's what I ended up with. I, I think that this jumper is all right. I, it, I made it for a purpose, which is to wear over a particular, under a particular raincoat, which is quite thin. So it wasn't that good for the winter. And combined with this, it's really good. And for that purpose, I do really like it. I just don't think it looks very good on me. Um, I think it's a little bit too cropped and the split hem doesn't look that good. Maybe I should, I'm gonna, probably gonna sew up the split hem and see if that helps. Um, so yeah, I don't, there's nothing really wrong with the pattern or the yarn or anything. I just think the combination of it doesn't really suit me. Um, but I do, I don't think it's bad. Um, I had to switch to gray for the end of this sleeve because of a moth, potential moth situation, which is contained, but it's contained in the bag that has all of my other nudogen, um, which I haven't dealt with. It's still just in the cupboard. Um, I don't have a freezer and it's not cold enough here to put it outside. There are a lot of really helpful comments on my video where I talked about it. Um, and I'm still not totally sure what I should do. Um, but it's not doing any harm just in the big Ziploc bag in the cupboard, I think. So it's, I don't know, maybe eventually I'll figure something out. Um, so, oh yeah, this is my Trista. It's all right. Like, I don't, I'm sorry I can't give a more glowing review of it. I just don't ever really feel that good when I'm wearing it. I think part, maybe it's because the nudidin has no drape and it doesn't fit that well in the back. Um, things that fit in the front can be quite bad, like tenty in the back. So that could be one of the things that's contributing to it. I really like the sleeves and I like the color work and I like the neck. Um, so those are the pros and cons of my Trista. And the color, this green Skostra color from Nutrigen is really stunning. I like the colors of the yoke a lot. I think I chose well. Actually, this black was from New Lanark Mill, which is sort of a, a proto-socialist factory town, which was kind of created by Robert Owen in the 18th century in Scotland. And I went there yesterday <laughs> on a, like a school field trip. It was really cool. Um, yeah, I had a really good time. We walked along to see the waterfall. You're so cute. We walked along to see a waterfall, which was beautiful. 
we had pretty warm weather, uh, although it was very humid, and then there was a pretty big rainstorm, but that was while we were inside eating lunch. Um, and then I took the train back to Edinburgh, which the train station that would have been useful is closed. So I had to go most of the way back to Glasgow and then take the train back to Edinburgh. So it was a pretty long journey, but it was a really fun day. Um, and I wore my other jumper, which is made completely from yarn that comes from New Lanark. And um, that was kind of exciting for me. One weird thing about the museum was it didn't really acknowledge like the colonialism of the place um, or like the vi the colonial violence of the place before they were spinning wool which is what they do now they were spinning cotton and all of the cotton came from plantations where people were enslaved and you would think that they would have mentioned that somewhere in the museum or sort of reflected on it but instead it was this sort of weird like everyone was so happy and no they weren't really allowed to leave and they weren't paid real money and a lot of them didn't speak English, they only spoke Gaelic, so they couldn't really, if they did leave, they wouldn't be able to talk to anyone. But what a great guy, what a great guy. It was such a, it was very strange. I mean, they were treated much better than factory workers in other places, but it still wasn't like great for them. It's like, oh, they were living 10 people to a room, but they, they had one day off a week, I don't know. Very interesting place. Um, with a dark ride, I don't think I've ever been on a dark ride before. It felt like strange to have this amusement, like a mechanical theme park amusement uh, in this historic mill town. Anyway, I'll stop talking about New Lanark, but that's where this black is from and it was extremely interesting. And they've got beautiful wool. Um, which I would recommend checking out if you are interested in some wool and spun dyed in, a lot of it is dyed in the wool. Really, really nice and affordable wool. So that is my assessment of my field trip yesterday and the New Lanark experience and what I'm wearing. I, don't, I hope you can see Fergus on my lap. He's so cute. He's very lap cat right now. Um, my partner is away and Fergus has just been glued to me. At nighttime, he sleeps as the little spoon in the bed and then if I roll over, he'll get up and then walk over to the other side so he can resume his position as little spoon. It's so cute. He's very sweet. Okay, I will now tell you about my three works in progress. Starting with my marled jumper. Maybe I'll, I'll actually start with my other jumper because my marled jumper has, um, what's it called? The butcher cord, not butcher. The try it on cord, the the pony bead tubing, whatever it's called, and Fergus, that's like his favorite toy, and I think if he bites it too much, it won't work anymore. Like the suction won't work. So if I pull that out, he's gonna start biting it. So I'll maybe wait and see if I talk about that a little bit later. Maybe he won't be have be still sitting on my lap anymore. So. Let's start, let's talk about the next pair of socks. This is the fourth pattern in the Stephen West sock, sock series. Um, Stephen West year of, 2023 year of socks and this is the March pattern. Um, and it's the woven check socks. So here you go, I hope you can see. I feel very far away from the camera, but it looked fine when I looked at it. I can't see it right now. So yeah, it's using slip stitches 
uh, to create this sort of woven pattern. I'm using two more yarns from Woolly Mammoth. Um, this blue, which is really nice. It has like, it's sort of a muted gray blue, but then it also has some areas of more purpley blue in it, um, which aren't really coming out in the sock. I think if it was stock in it, you'd be able to see that well. Um, and then I'm using this, this brown, um, which was part of the sock set that I bought. Not with the blue, but I really like those two colors together for the basket type pattern of the sock. Well, Fergus is gone. Thank you for coming to visit. Um, so I just started the first one quite recently. I'm now on track with the year of socks and that feels great. I'm enjoying making my video series. I, I know that it's kind of silly. I found this when I, was a, when I watch videos. I'm not often very interested in vlogs. Like I'm more interested in the knitting than I am in the like other stuff. But then when I made when I've been making those videos, it's really fun to watch them back and to see like all the different places I was knitting these socks in. So um, if you want to see me struggle over the cable trellis socks. Check out the last video, it's really long. Um, this one will be much shorter, the painting triangle sock. And then for the woven check sock, I haven't really started recording anything for it yet because I only started knitting them yesterday. Um, well, I cast on the ribbing a few days ago, but then I hadn't started the pattern. And on the train yesterday, I knit most of this pattern because it was quite a long train ride. Um, I made a little mistake. I accidentally knit two rows plain in the blue before starting the pattern when it was supposed to be two rows in the brown, but that's fine. I actually am going to be playing yarn chicken with the brown because I only have 20 grams of it, so I'm not totally sure how much I'm going to need, but I'll just, it's fine, like I'll just knit as much of the sock as I can. Well, okay, I need to rewind a little bit. Once I get to the heel flap, I'll do the heel flap, and then I will start the next sock. And then once I get to the heel flap on that sock, I'll do alternating one repeat at a time. And just get as much of the brown as I can. I might have enough to do both of the socks, but it'll be close. Um, but I just really wanted to use that color. So, yeah, I think it will be good. It's not that fast of a knit. It's not as much fun or as relaxing as the woven, as the painting triangle socks because oh, most, at least half of the sock is just purling. Um, which is fine. That's why I'm knitting it on Magic Loop because I don't like purling on nine inch circulars and double pointed needles are kind of hard to take on the train. So, yeah, it's a little bit more involved, but I don't mind it. I think that the effect is quite cool of the woven sort of texture, and I think that they're gonna be a really nice pair of socks. The colors are cute. So, that, those are my socks. Now, since Fergie has gone, he's looking out the window, I can show you my, the project that's probably been getting the most work from me over the past two weeks. And it is my Lakes Pullover, I think. It's by Ozetta, and Ozetta names all of her patterns. Well, not all of them, but there's like the Towns Pullover, I think, as well. I think this is the Lakes. It's a saddle shoulder design, and I am, I finished a sleeve. I, last week I was really worried about not having enough yarn because I panicked when I went through two balls of yarn for just the saddles and the neck shaping at the front and the back, but it's actually going to be fine. At this stage, I've used just over half of my yarn, so I'm pretty sure that I will have enough. 
um, it'll be a little bit more cropped than I would do if I had endless yarn, but definitely will have enough to make like a really, really nice jumper. And I blocked this um, the other day just to, cause the yarn changed quite a bit actually. I blocked the saddle shoulders to get a gauge, to like double check my gauge. And the yarn is like much drapier and not softer, but a little bit more mellow, if that makes sense. It feels very different from the way it feels when it's first knit up. I veered from the pattern in almost every <laughs> place because my gauge was very different from the gauge in the pattern. Um, my gauge was 16 stitches per 4 inches and the pattern was 18. So it was actually, the complicated part was really just the neck shaping and the saddle and casting it on. And the pattern was a really good basis for it. I feel very confident that if you have a gauge that matches the pattern, you'll have a really good time knitting it and it will come out really well. Um, but I didn't have a gauge that matched the pattern and I was just too far into it at that point. I, the other change that I made was I made the sleeves tapered. This was mostly just a decision because I didn't know how much yarn I would have. Um, but I've had a bit of a bad history with sleeves, just getting them wrong and having to redo them. So I was, I, that was the part I was the most nervous about. Not like the complication of trying to figure out like at a totally different gauge. And I couldn't just knit a different size because the smallest size is still bigger than the size that I wanted to make at my gauge. So that wasn't the part that I was worried about. It was the sleeves. And so I did end up decreasing every fifth row. Um, in the pattern it said to decrease every three quarters of an inch, but since I had wider stitches, that would put me off, I, th I thought. So yeah, I, I don't know, I knit 20 rows plain because one jumper that I made in the past, I didn't knit any rows plain at the top and the sleeves were really tight. Um, and then I did that decrease and they, it looks good. I actually could have done no rows plain and it would have been like a more fitted sleek sleeve, which um, would have been more what I was thinking of, but I'm very happy with this sleeve. If I end up not having enough yarn, which I, which I don't think is gonna happen, then I would potentially rip it out and knit it um, a little bit narrower. I mean, five stitches less every row would probably make quite a big difference over the whole sleeve, but I don't think it's going to come to that. I really don't think it will because I have four more balls of wool and this took one and a half. So if I have one and a half for the other sleeve, then I have two and a half for the body. And this amount of body is um less than two balls of wool so that means i should get at least twice as much of it again so it should be hit me at hip it should hit me at hip height so a little bit longer than cropped um but not like as long as i might want it to be so i think it's gonna be good i did a folded over neckline i did it shorter than the pattern called for because of yarn um, limitations, but I think that it's really nice. It blocked out a little bit more than I wanted it to. I don't really want to put an elastic in, but I would maybe consider doing that. Um, I love the way that the marl looks. I really like the way the marl looks on the inside too. I like it a little bit better, but um, I just didn't feel like I had the knowledge to be able to make this pattern in reverse stockinette. I, I was just scraping along, just making this pattern at a different gauge. Although, it turned out great. And this is actually my first folded over neckline that I've done on purpose, and not because I accidentally did the neckline too sm the neck too small, so I had to fold it over so my head could fit through, um, which happened with a red jumper that I made a few years ago. So I'd never done the, um, 
binding off while knitting it together with a stitch at the bottom. That took forever. It took me like over an hour to do that. Um, and I, th I was very worried about doing it too tight, but in retrospect, I maybe should have done it tighter. I could almost go back in with a crochet hook, but it's already getting a little bit bulky. Um, I could also undo it and do it again, but I really don't want to. I, I was like three quarters of the way done, and we had a visitor staying with my parents. Uh, I don't live with them, but we live very close. And um, we were all going to get Indian food together that night. And our visitor, Nick, who's, who's really nice, it was great to have him visit um, from the States, had gone to the golf course with my dad, but Nick was just going for a walk. And, um, cause it's very beautiful around where the golf course is. Kilspindi is the golf course they were at. Um, so they were in the car on the way back about 40 minutes away. And they called me and they said, oh sir, can you order Indian food? And we'll pick it up when we get back to Edinburgh in about 40 minutes. And I said, sure, and I wrote down what they wanted, and I thought to myself, okay, well, I only have a quarter of this neckline left. I'll call and order the Indian food when I finish this, because I really don't want to get up and mess everything up, and then I'll lose my rhythm. <laughs> they called me. It felt like a, a second to me. Um, and I had just finished casting off the neckline, and they were like, we're at the place, we're at the restaurant, um, did you put in the order? And I hadn't done it yet because I, the time had flown by so fast when I was doing the neckline. Um, so I had to apologize for that because then they had to wait there for like an hour. It was my fault. But, yeah, I should have just done it right away, but they said it was okay. They were chatting. And now my neckline is finished. I didn't tell them why, <laughs> why I hadn't called, but um, yeah, that was maybe bad. Anyway, I could try this on and show you what it looks like. I'm feeling very chatty today. Also, I have like a million ends to weave in for this project. So, this is what it looks like. Let me try and barber, not butcher, barber cord. Here, I'll pull that in so it's not like flaring so much. So, this is what it looks like. Here's the sleeve. You can see it's like got quite a bit of positive ease, but it's comfortable and I don't think it looks bad. Oh no, where is it gonna come and attack the barber cord? And it fits me really well in the chest. It is quite tenty in the back, if you can see that. I, I think that my next project, when it comes, like my, my next like big task, when it comes to knitting sweaters that fit me really well, is going to be figuring out how to make things fit me in the chest that aren't, that won't bag out in the back. Um, oh no, don't need on that. That's so fragile. I just can't look. That's kind of the thing that bothers me about a knitted knit. It's just so fragile. Or any unspun yarn. Um, I don't want to have to worry about like my earring tearing a hole in the shawl. Or my cat accidentally destroying a jumper just because he's kneading on it because he's happy. I don't know. I think maybe if you're not a cat owner or if you are a cat owner and are able to be a bit more sensible, you'll just be like, take him up. Don't let him do that. But it's so hard to stop him from doing it if he's clearly having such a nice time. <laughs> anyway, this is my lakes, lakes pullover. And yeah, it looks so good. Um, it's just really good. I think it's going to be amazing. The wool is a little bit itchy, but it also feels like it's made out is like gonna wear like iron it feels a little itchy but also like 
it'll keep me warm. Um, one weird thing about this yarn, I don't think that it's like available online. My dad gave it to me for Hanukkah a few years ago and he got it from a farm, a local farmer's market. Um, and I went on their website and they don't make this yarn anymore. They have like other yarns. I think they just make a different one every year depending on their sheep. But, oh God, we're still going. The black ply. The yarn is made out of three plies, a white, a tan, and a black. And the black ply sometimes is broken or knotted um, or like overspun and then there's like a little nip and it's only over the black ply that is like that which is so interesting um, but I think that it has a very beautiful effect I really like the inside I've been working steadily on this I went down to a 4.5 for the body I went down to a 4 for the cuff and then to a 3.5 for the neck. I'll maybe put a little bit of elastic in it, but I've never done that before, and I don't really like the idea of it. I don't know why. I'm still going, huh? So, that's my, that's my jumper. I really like the port slasher pattern too. It's, um, it's a raglan, I think. Oh no, it's not. It's a drop shoulder, but it has like a design where the shoulder is dropped, like a little knit pearly sort of design. And I think it looks really nice. Um, and this pattern was written very well. I believe it's size inclusive, very easy, subtle shoulder construction. And I would really recommend it. I think I already said that. I'll take it off now because my arm is cold. Now I would like to put that jumper back on, but I'll have to confiscate it off of Fergie. Can I have this? <laughs> no. Okay, the answer to can I have this is a firm no. See, if he was kneading on that marl jumper, I wouldn't be worried because I don't think he could tear through that. Okay. I guess I'll just put a different jumper on. This is actually the jumper that I wore to New Lanark yesterday. It made completely from their wool. Um, it's the, the pattern is the Funky Turtle by Tati. Teddy's Knit Garden on Instagram. I don't remember her last name. She's a Ukrainian designer. And it was in 52 Weeks of Easy Knits by Lina, which I test knit. Okay, I just have one more project to show you. And it is, um, it's in that stage where it doesn't really look like anything. Um, it's the, Harlow sweater. I don't. It's a. It's a pattern by Kadri, and I've been talking about this for a couple weeks now. Um, I let me just tell you about it before I show you more. Um, I one thing that's been really trendy recently that I really like is this sort of marl color shifting, but like big color shift stripes. Um, drop shoulder. You also see it in like other garments, but I really like the jumpers because that's that's what I want to knit. Um, and I had this vision of a pink, like a medium pink going through orange, going through purple, like real tropical sunset colors um, in a jumper. And I thought I'll do this through spin cycle. Um, and I'll find a drop shoulder pattern. So I bought some of the spin cycle, actually a lot of the worsted weight, what's it called? It's like, dream state. 
is their worsted weight um, wool. And I got three colors, rosy maple, which is this color, which my one didn't have any of the orange really in it. Um, nostalgia, which is this. I've already wound up. And then Kaluna, which is like a light, here, I actually have some of it over here as well. It's like a light pink that goes kind of through some greens. Um, it ended up leaning much more purple than I was hoping, so I decided that in order to give it a bit more drape, because I think that I want to add drape to the fabric. I think the drop shoulder will look better if it's a bit of a looser gauge, have a bit of like a drapey fabric. So I thought I'll add a medium pink, like the color that I'm really going for. Um, strand of silk or alpaca or silk alpaca um, to hold with the other yarn and that will maybe pull it more in the color direction that I was thinking and also give it a little bit of drip. I actually think I left my swatch over there. So I made some purchases. I spent a lot of time online looking through different yarns. I really wanted an alpaca silk um, and I bought, but I wanted it to be lace weight. I've used Isiger Alpaca 1, which is not got silk in it, it's just alpaca, in the past, and I've really, really liked using that yarn. I've, I held it together with a worsted weight as in the past as well, and it made a really beautiful fabric together. That was a hat that I made for my partner's mom. Um, so I was looking into buying that, but they don't really have any good pinks. And then I was looking at, I don't know, some like trendy, I feel like sand is garn is trendy and that sort of thing. They have a lace weight alpaca or alpaca silk, but they also didn't have any pinks. So like any good pinks, like they had like trendy millennial pinks. Um, and blush pinks, but that's not what I wanted. I wanted like a medium hot pink, medium pink, hot pink, more on the orange side than on the blue side. There's a car alarm going on. So I went onto Hobby, which is not a company I've ever bought from before, and also is a company that I have kind of, I'm like suspicious of them. I don't know, it just feels like they're really big, really fast. And to me, that's a sign of like, this company's owned by Amazon. That sort, like, I get that sort of vibe. And their website as well gives me that vibe. I don't, that's not based on anything, but I don't use Amazon. I, on a, like, I morally boycott it. Um, and I, I, I like to support small yarn shops and small dyers and businesses rather than, and mills, rather than like, I don't know, the bigger, like clearly already corporate um, yarn manufacturers. And they did like a bunch of advertising on YouTube with other podcasters um, a year or two ago. And it made me think like, hmm, this is suspicious. Anyway, but also the other reviews from the other podcasters were glowing. So anyway, I went on, I tried everything, and I saw that Hobby had a color that looked good in an alpaca lace weight. So I bought three balls of the soft alpaca lace, which is, it's 400 meters per 50 grams. And I, I spent quite a bit of time on yarn sub, trying to find yarns, and yarn subs, it's a little bit outdated. It has a lot of um, like hand dyers in bases that they haven't carried in years, which is kind of frustrating because I spent quite a lot of time going through those things and seeing, is it just not on the website because they don't have it right now? Is it just on the website because they're never gonna have it again? Um, so I wonder if there's like 
It's a really good feature. If you don't know what Yarn Sub is, it's a website where you can put in the different features of yarns and it will show you so yarns that could be substituted um, with like the things that it has the yarns have in common with the one you're looking at and the things that they don't have in common and it's a really really good tool although it can be a little bit dated I find um, anyway I bought this it was pretty cheap not like that cheap but not that expensive I don't know it's like six or seven pounds a ball it's 100% alpaca and it's lace weight and I got this color which is a bit more muted in person um, it's not exactly the color I was thinking of but it is a nice color someone just rang the bell with a package to deliver um, so I buzzed them into the building but then I, they never came to the door so I guess I have to go down and pick it up which is fine but I'll do that later I was saying about this hobby yarn that I bought yeah it's good um, I can move this to safety now. Fergus moved in the commotion of me answering the door to get a package. Uh, so I moved my jumper to safety. Um, I was saying about this hobby yarn. It's fine. Yeah, I don't... I ha I was pretty... I'm pretty kind of hung up on it. I don't know why. Um, but it's good. There's nothing wrong with it at all. It was well priced. And um, yeah, I don't know why the company kind of gives me the heebie-jeebies. I can't explain it. Um, so then the next day, I decided that I wasn't done looking for a lace weight companion to my spin cycle. Before this had arrived, so I bought more, and I bought this from Malabrigo. Um, I'll silk Paca in the color uh, Cosmic, in the color Light of Love. So there's this, and it's quite variegated, quite n very bright. And I wound this into a ball. This feels much drapier than the other because it has silk in it. It's 70% um, alpaca, 30% silk. And it's a little bit thinner. It's um, 420 meters per, 100, per 50 grams. Um, so here are the two colors next to each other. So I made a swatch of this with the spin cycle. And I didn't like the way that it looked. The pink is just too bright, like it's just too much. I really like the back. For some reason, like the way of the gauge, it makes the like lines look really sh like little straight blips. I really like that. I think that this Needle size is great, the fabric is great, it's really drapey, if you can see that. Um, and I used one, two, three. I used a US size eight, which I think is a 4.5 or five, mil five millimeter needle for this. But so yeah, so I didn't like the pink. I just didn't think it looked that good. It didn't really blend in at all. Like it didn't change the base color at all. It just looks like a white um, marl. So that was no good. Then I made a swatch. I thought maybe I'll just knit it without anything held with it. And this was a point where I was like, I don't really want to make nice swatches anymore because I'm worried I'm going to run out of spin cycle. So I made this little swatch also using the five millimeter needle. And this is too too holy. Um, yeah, it's just like too much. I don't know if you'll be able to see, but you can really see through it in a way that you can't really with this. And I didn't like the fabric as much. So that's the one o'clock gun. So yeah, I, I ended up casting on with the hobby yarn held with the spin cycle instead of with the Malabrigo because the color is more um, muted. And I think it's coming out really well. The Hobby Yarn also has a little bit of a halo, um, whereas the Malabrigo doesn't. So it is actually changing the color a little bit. And I didn't swatch separately with the Hobby because 
I didn't want to. Um, so I'm making this KG pattern. I'll put the pattern name and picture on screen. Um, it's a drop shoulder design with a really beautiful eye cord detail along the back, the top of the back, where you can sort of see the shaping in the pattern. Um, I chose to do the eye cord detail with the lighter color and then start with the darkest that I have because I thought that would make it pop more. Um, in the pattern, she tells you to go up a needle size for the eye cord, which I did, but I regret doing. I think that it would have looked better if I hadn't done that, but my eye cords tend to be pretty loose. Um, so if you are a tighter eye cord knitter than maybe, that would be good advice for you. Um, and I really like the way that it's looking so far. It's quite hard to see um, because it's very rolly. <laughs> and I have blocked this back panel because I was worried about the size. I was worried about it being way too big. I didn't know how much it would block width-wise since this is super wash yarn. I mean, I have the swatch. I just think it's it can be quite different when it's a bigger piece. Um, so I did all of the shaping for the back, but I stopped. You, have, you then, after you do the shaping, you have to knit until the bottom of the armhole. Um, but I think I might want to do slightly smaller armholes than in the pattern. I don't know. Maybe I don't. Anyway, no matter what I want to do, I think I want to switch color at this point. I'm a little bit worried about color management. It's just, um, it's just like a fancy yarn and I don't want to mess it up. So, um, yeah, I, I'm not totally sure what my plan is. I'm a little bit worried about the two fronts not matching or not looking good together, but I just, I've been telling myself that the lace weight um, does a lot. I think that this hobby yarn has a little bit of a halo, which does a lot to blend the colors together. And I think that it will look good. All of the colors look good together. I think it will be fine. Um, so yeah, I cast on the front last night, but I think I'm going to rip this out because it's looking like the neckline is going to be too big. I don't, the pattern has quite a wide neck with quite long, a long turtleneck, and I don't really want it to have such a wide neck. I want it to have more of a crew. Um, so I think I need to rip this part out and just cast on more stitches like pick up more stitches on the eye cord to narrow that neckline a little bit and then I think I'm going to try and knit the pattern as uh, instructed. Although it's hard to not want to change everything. I'm not like a person interested in pattern designing at all, but I am a person interested in having things be exactly the way that I want them. So my gauge is also slightly off with this. It's a 17 stitch gauge in the pattern, I think, and I have an 18 stitch gauge. Ironically, I have the gauge that I needed for my other pattern I have for this one. And that gauge would actually be better for this pattern. But I'm pointing at the marl jumper. I don't know if that's visible. Anyway, I rip this out. It's not that much knitting, although it's kind of painful to rip out whenever, anytime you have to rip it out. And I think once I finish the neck shaping, I will then try and change color on both sides at the same time, like the front and the back for the sleeve, because I don't want to do all up above the sleeve and dark and then have a big block of light. I want it to be a bit more fluid and narrower bands of color. So that's fun. I'm having a lot of fun with this. The only thing that hasn't been fun is having to wind up all of this yarn by hand. I bought eight skeins and I think I've wound six of them. So anytime I feel a little too mentally tired for knitting, um, because for a while there was no project 
that I was doing that was just mindless. Now I have the sleeve and the body for that lakes pullover, but for a while it was all very complicated. I would just start winding and I was breaking up the balls into, for nostalgia, the darkest color, I was breaking it when it got to its lightest because I thought that would be a good part to blend in with the other colors. And then for Kaluna, the lightest color, I was breaking it up into when that one was the darkest So because I thought that would blend best. Um, so I'm gonna have a lot of ends to leave in, but as I've spent more time knitting, I'm more okay weaving in ends, especially if I think that that's gonna help me make something that I'm really happy with. Um, also, I learned how to weave in ends properly and to follow the stitch, the, the, the way of the stitches, so that the tails that are woven have the same amount of stretch in every direction as the rest of the fabric so they can't come undone. And since learning how to do that, I feel much more relaxed about weaving in ends, which is a good thing because there's so many ends on my marled, marled pullover. I think that's like partially because of the pattern but also partially just because I kept making, making mistakes. So, that is the plan for this. I would say it's knitting up quickly, but I actually won't because that would be a lie, it's not. But this whole thing is knitted flat. I'm not against knitting flat. Um, it just is slower, so. I really am enjoying the pattern so far. It's, it's, um, a little bit more, I don't, casual, I guess, if that makes sense. Um, and I'm making the size large, which should give me about four inches of positive ease in the bust, but I originally made the eye cord for the size extra large and it came almost down to my elbows so I think I should be taking upper bust measurements for this sort of thing. Um, I also, again, don't want it to be too baggy in the back. So size large, even though it doesn't have the right amount of ease as recommended in the pattern, I think will turn out really well for me, um, hopefully. I think, I mean, if it's a little bit small, like if it's a little bit smaller than the pattern recommends it being, I think that that's okay. I think my problem is just if it's too big, it will really swamp me. Like this is a jumper that is probably too big and it's comfortable and I wear it a lot and I like it, but I don't really need another one that's like this. Um, so yeah, that is my spin cycle jumper. I think last podcast I said that I would feel like success, like I had made a really good decision around purchasing the spin cycle if I had cast it on by next time, and I had happily cast it on. So I feel great about this, <laughs> this yarn that I now have, and yeah, I think um, it's nice to have both of these jumper projects going at the same time with such different yarns. The other thing about the um, the Marl jumper is since this yarn is so rustic, it, my finger on my left hand, I have some skin issues because of the medical treatments that I had. And um, on the days when I was knitting furiously on this, I actually gave myself a blister on my finger without realizing it, just where, like, where I hold the yarn to knit um, Continental. So it's nice to have a softer project to also be working on. I love this and it does soften up and it's not a problem if I'm knitting like a normal amount a day or if, my, or if I'm a little less stressed, maybe I'm holding things a little bit looser, but <laughs> that was something that happened with this, which was unfortunate. Um, I, so I've, in telling you about my spin cycle jumper, I told you about my, all my acquisitions which was the Hobby Lace and the Malabrigo Lace. These will get, the Malabrigo will get used, definitely, because I really love that sort of yarn. I also made a swatch with some Nutigen. I don't wanna talk about it, it's an ugly swatch. I try to make beautiful swatches. This one is just ugly. 
not like the color combo. The color combo is great, it's just like the way that it looks. It's kind of too big. And I don't have that much of this color anyway. So I got to this stage and I was like, I don't think I want to knit at this gauge. I think I need to do, this was one strand of knitted in. I was planning on making the semper v-neck or maybe the pearl v-neck. I don't know who the pearl is by. The semper v-neck is by the knit pearl girl. Um, but this is also 16 stitches over four inches with gauge, which is way off from the semper pattern. So I'm gonna make another small swatch with just one strand of Neutrogen and one strand of Alpaca Lace and see what my gauge is there. But I'm not gonna start that until after I finish these two patterns, jumpers. But it's always kind of fun to swatch. I like swatching sometimes. <laughs> Um, that's everything that I have to show you today. It kind of feels like I didn't have that much to show, but then also I've been talking forever. So hopefully this was interesting and you're feeling excited and inspired by the projects. I know that I am. Um, and I, I'll be back to talk to you in about two weeks. Maybe you will see my next West Knits video before then. Um, but also maybe not and yeah thank you so much for watching and please leave a comment if you would like to and i will see you next time bye